Okay, so um, uh, first of all, thanks very much uh, for the visit this morning. It was uh, very nice to see the facilities, and uh, uh, I know it takes <laughs> takes some time to do that and stuff. We do a lot of visits for people, and it, but it's very much appreciated. It was very nice. Okay, so the idea for the uh, kind of for the rest of the day <coughs> is to talk about um, some stuff. Um, uh, it's we'll see how how this bit goes. It's not prepared in a, what 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 I wanted to do was it for it to be kind of informal discussions, um, and for me the idea uh, this afternoon or now I think we have lunch, so lunch has been pushed back to one o'clock. That's right. Um, the idea is for me is to discuss uh, some of these different things that were down on the agenda or anything else you want to bring up and i think what would be really good is if we can identify any of these areas where uh, we should uh, be thinking about uh, harmonizing stuff working discussing together and some of these topics may be um, they, we might might consider that it's not worth uh, kind of in the future working together on on these subjects. That's fine. But uh, so really, for me, the idea will be to yeah to see if we identify areas where we should, as a working group, the EMBRC working group, be be looking to go further in the future and uh, and and work together on these things. So this afternoon. Um, uh, so we, we have a session where you are free to present whatever you want. Um, I don't know how many of you are thinking of presenting anything, but uh, presenting either with slides or just uh, talking about these issues. And then what we'll do this afternoon is try and... Um, I told you that there was this um, EMBRC call for projects for joint development activities. Uh, which has just been published, um, and so the idea will be to just do some brainstorming, see if the, we have any ideas for kind of collaborative projects um, that we could uh, apply to the, for this funding. Um, and I'll explain uh, the, the actual call in a bit more detail later on. So what we had on the agenda for this little session was to talk about, and we, we kind of started talking about it yesterday, but talk about um, uh, strain transfer and strain deposit and the kind of um, uh, administration around that. <coughs> and I think we also had, we, there was also quality sys management systems and stuff, so. So, Maybe we can start off on the 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 strain transfer question, um, and maybe first of all you could. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I think Arno showed yesterday, or or at least uh, mentioned that there are some um, some uh, EMBR, in EMBR, EMBRC in one of the documents. I forget which one. There are some model models for terms and conditions and MTAs. I'd be interested to know to start with what are your policies on this at, at the moment and and then we can maybe have a bit of discussion on on whether that's something we should be looking to harmonize and stuff. So can we have the other microscope the microphone? So Maybe you could start by telling us what is your what is your policy on uh, strain transfer terms and conditions MTA etc. Let's see now. Well, uh, we have uh, taken the um, uh, model that the Echo uh, has. Um, approved for MTA and MDA. So our um, transfer uh, office of the university has uh, made some uh, additional, uh, so to say, um, administrative um, comments on that. 
um, we um, of course uh, put in this MTA the Nagoya protocol that has should be the ABS policy has should be uh, accomplished that uh, especially for the Spanish uh, people or the Spanish uh, strains taken by, uh, from the, the genetic resources uh, collected in, Span in Spain, they have to accomplish with uh, the use, the, la the law for the use of the biodiversity in Spain. And uh, we also uh, has um, remarked there that uh, the strain has no, cannot be transferred to a third before uh, without being um, informed at least and uh, that they have to also report if they uh, have published with this strain because we at the database and i hope so in soon we will um, uh, also uh, add this in the catalog all the references uh, done um, with our strains and uh, of course, if it is uh, mainly this MTA that we uh, provide is for non-commercial uh, strains, use of the strains. So, uh, uh, so you, you actually um, get people to sign an MTA for every transfer of strains? Yes. Okay, we'll discuss about that later. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, nec next. Okay, so in our case, in Akoi, we use an MTA too, uh, prepared by our university, um, based on several ones that uh, we found from other collections. Um, and uh, it's more or less the same as, as BA. Um, Every time we say we sell a, a we perform any kind of service or send a strain, we we ask for them to sign an MTA uh, and specify what kind of use they will perform with the strains. Something like this. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Well, I have our MTA here. If you want to take a look now or later, it's yeah. okay. Um, we in our MTA we just ask for the signature of uh, the user, and there are a lot of uh, there are eleven um, items that this user has to agree with. So one is about these commercial purposes, um, and it uh, the. The user is signing that uh, he wants to use for commercial purposes. He has to contact the focal point, and that's it. Okay, um, I have a few comments on these, but I'll come to those maybe when we've uh, gone through. No way. What is your policy on this? Yes, so we have gone back and forward <laughs> uh, regarding the MTA. Uh, so today, in fact, uh, we are mostly working to in projects and big consortia. So we have kind of the overall agreements within that system. Uh, but um, however, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, so we had an MTA where it was lined up with uh, with. Uh, with percentages of breadth to sales and so on, uh, because it was closely, we are, as a national marine biobank, we are closely related to um, to, no, to the Norwegian uh, regulations. But then they kind of Norway turned 180 degrees and decided we will not have any kind of monetary benefits on this. So, so we are in the process now, or we want to just fulfill it uh, uh, and. Um, and it has to be then um, uh, kind of approved by the ministry. So, so um, yes. And as I said yesterday, as Norway has no regulation on this, we do not, as we started out with, we do not differ between the academic uh, uh, research and commercial uh, 
kind of development at at the end. So so for us, it's it's more a focus on well, what could add value to our collection. And as I said, it might be to to uh, to have. To, to 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 get input regarding uh, publications, IP, uh, and so on. So, so, so it, mm. <coughs> every transfer you have an MTA. We 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 will have. Okay. So so nowadays it's it's just on bigger projects, you know. So but as soon as we are out there in the web catalog, we have to be prepared to to kind of also uh, handle these smaller. <laughs> okay. Yes. Mm. Uh, anyone else, Xavier? Okay, in in our case, as I told the first day, uh, we are a bit different to the rest of the of the banks. But in in our case, we just we do a, a just a transfer agreement uh, document, which is very simple. Because uh, we, the first thing we do in our case, we are not selling uh, uh, live uh, macro algae or whatever. So in this case, we are just uh, uh, giving uh, uh, tissue samples. But uh, when we when the, when we receive the request, we always send them a document, a little bit asking for the purposes of the. Of the employee of the of the employment of the sample, uh, which techniques and so on. So this way, first of all, we we can tell them that they have to comply or not with uh, Nagoya, depending on the case. In most of the cases, uh, they they are used just for chemical analysis or isotope analysis or something like that. But uh, uh, we in the mutual transfer agreement we. Uh, as we have received the aim of the of the of the use of the samples, we always say that the bank committee uh, had a meeting and uh, the, that the request was accepted in these terms, in uh, for just for researching in those uh, in those um, uh, issues that they were we were informed before. Okay, and so then we. At the the samples and we sign both sides. So I sign it, and also the the the, the person who requests the samples signs as well. One copy for them, one copy for us, and that's the mutual agreement. But we always make uh, uh, we always uh, put uh, importance in, in the aim of the research because just warning them that. You have permission just for this, the same, for nothing else. Okay, thanks. Um, so in Roscoff, and in fact, uh, it's been harmonized in within EMBRC France, so it's Spaniels and Villefranche as well. Uh, we have a system which is a bit different because um, we don't, um, for, for the vast, vast majority of transfers that we do, we don't have an MTA, but we just have terms and conditions. So which basi basically says the same thing. And uh, it doesn't have to be signed, but uh, in the ordering process, uh, they have to say, I agree. And so they can't order if they haven't said, I agree. Um, and we did this because um, uh, I think it, I mean, the, the 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 point was to try and make it as easy as possible for the users, and you, uh, it was interesting that you said you get the 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 user to sign your MTA. As far as I understand, that is legally it is not worth anything because that person is not legally, uh, um, what's the word, um, responsible for the institute and i was told when we were talking about this and this is some time ago that you know for a, if you have an mta for it to be really legally binding it basically would have to be the president of the university or whatever who was going to sign it and you're obviously when you're providing a, a strain <coughs> for fundamental research you're not going to go and ask the president of the university to sign your mta so as far as i gather your MTAs are 
not actually worth anything. So. Our MTA is uh, signed by the vice director of our entity as a provider. Yeah. And we uh, ask for a representative of the uh, this company or uh, other, or if there's a research group, they are responsible of this uh, research group to sign the, yeah, but, the MTA. Uh, uh, legally, I think they are okay. not. I, I recognize that they would prefer to do it in the process of the order because to me it's just to to, to sign that you recognize what uh, yeah, or accept and what you say there and it's easier yeah but it's a uh, university way of doing it um, that for me is just a head a headache so they wouldn't allow you to do no we have uh, discussed you should, several you should times. just do it and <laughs> and be no, but we had this. this well, I mean, this 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 was some time ago that we had this discussion, and we had the same thing in France, where when you asked the university what, what should we do, they said, "Oh, you should uh, have the you know these MTAs signed by the president of their university and stuff." And we kind of discussed with them and explained why that re was really not practical, and above all, you explain if a Obviously, it's for us, it's different for if there is a commercial use that obviously goes via an MTA, mm -hmm. and that's you know, normal. But for all other uses, what is it the risk? What are you risking by not having a, a legally signed document? And, and the answer for me is you're, not, you're risking nothing. I mean, it, it, uh, you say we we have in the in the terms and conditions like you have in the MTAs. You ask people not to transfer to a third party. You ask people to tell you when they make a publication. The truth, the, the the reality is that hardly anyone ever tells us that they've made a publication. But fortunately for the collections, which is not the case so much for like macroorganism services and. Um, it's actually very, well, relatively easy to track. You just put um, the code RCC in in um, Google Scholar. Um, <coughs> so it's relatively easy to track, but hardly anyone ever contacts us to say. Uh, and, and you say don't transfer it to a third party, but how do you check? How do you verify? And so all of this is, is kind of a good faith thing. And if they don't abide by these, if it's for fun fundamental research, you know, what are you risking? I mean, it's not you're not really risking anything, you know, major. So that was it was by explaining that and explaining the idea of risk, you know, saying well, this this is a heavy administrative procedure and it's not actually really protecting you. Or there's no there's not actually any risk of even if they don't follow it. So. Um, I understand this, that the signature, uh, maybe it's not uh, legally valid, but um, I have a question. Uh, in your case in Roscoff, you ask to mark, uh, I agree, I agree, I agree. So is this legally no, valid? No, 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 no okay. absolutely not. No, no, no it's, it's not legally binding, but it's, it's morally binding, shall we say. But um, no, no, it's legally is is not worth anything. I mean, I think there are ways to do legal signatures online, but uh, as I say, it's us as researchers, we we are not in general. Uh, we're not. We don't have the right to the legal right to s agree to something in the name of our university. It has to be the presidency. So no, it's it's really nothing legal at all. It's it's just moral. And I say we've had this system and as far as I know we've never had anyone who's you know gone off and and done commercial research without telling us and made millions and you know you have to kind of trust people at some point. And um, our legal department uh, told us the same uh, and they asked us okay uh, you need to ask to the person 
with the uh, uh, right uh, representation uh, something uh, powers power of representation you need to ask to that person to sign and we oh my god in case of research is very complicated and they told us okay but this is very important for commercial purposes the other ones okay you can accept whatever you want because it's only a procedure similar to all of them Arno, do you have a comment? Um, yeah, the only risk that I can see is uh, that only uh, even if it's for a fundamental research, they can distribute then your strengths to another company, and your your collection might be not useful if everyone does the same thing. Yeah, and but nobody I mean, contact you then. I think obviously that does happen. It happens within labs, certainly. You know, if if within the labs, if you have several teams, they'll give strains to the team who's in the lab next door. But you know, so what? But I, and I'm fairly sure it doesn't happen on a on any significant scale. And you know, even if it did, how how do you prove that? How do you police it? You know. Uh, yeah, just correct me if I'm wrong because I don't remember all the things we, we made with, with this. Uh, when we make the consultation at the university for, for the MTA, because at the beginning we thought that uh, we were going to, to, to do the same. Just have it in the web page and you tick and that's it. But it, it seems that uh, if it's signed by the uh, responsible of the university, I mean the president or the vice rector in our case, is just an indicator of the university for transfer uh, for transference activities, which is uh, for them is very important. An indicator of, of uh, transference uh, activity, not transference uh, knowledge. Yeah, uh, but you can give them that indicator without having anyone signed anything. You just tell them how many strains you've provided to who. And yeah, but uh, you, you know they can present these documents as uh, an activity of transference for the university. So that is because they, they still are signing all this this uh, MTA that we proceed at the at the laboratory. Well, it seems like a, a job creation scheme to me for for uh, kind of useless. But anyway. Yes, and um, there will always be crooks out there. So so a legal uh, documents. You how how, how how is it possible to 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 track all the the steps that you're looking for? But so I I guess from 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 our point of view, having only samples from uh, one uh, legislation, not in Norwegian jurisdiction, uh, it's quite e quite easy. But for you, if you, if you have samples from Brazil and so on, isn't that kind of complicating things here? I is it just because it's not your responsibility, but you are at some point allowed to distribute samples from another uh, jurisdiction? And what's 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 in the MTA for that? I don't quite see. No, what I, I, the say, I, I I I I just reckon that you have uh, samples from outside France. Yeah. So so it's just the so, same. Yeah, uh, but I mean those terms. those samples technically belong to the collection, the university, whether they come from. I mean, obviously, you're supposed to have have the um, the permissions to sample and. Etc., which is not always the case, admittedly, but but they belong to you. It's nothing to do with the country afterwards, apart oh. from ABS. But um, yes, but in ABS terms, we you know we inform the user what they have to do to yeah. be able to use it, and yeah. so that's mm. not really our problem. Mm. It's not a legal obligation, of it, no. so it's nothing to do with legal. Things. So you just you are just uh, uh, referring to. The, uh, to the to uh, the clearing house for that, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it's what I what it seems is that everyone has pretty much the same document, but different ways to kind of apply it. I mean, I say my, I would urge you to do your best to just put it as a terms and conditions, and it makes it. I, I mean, I th I think there probably are people who, if it might put off ordering, if they if you 
you know they have a big administrative uh, thing to do to do it so uh, what about in terms of deposits um, what to, what are your your conditions on deposit agreements because we do <coughs> so we do ask people when they de deposit to sign one sign a deposit agreement and what kind of things do you have in the deposit agreement in fact in fact the the the, the question that, that I'm interested to know um because we uh, originally our deposit agreement was um it was like I, th I think we all do it was taken from uh one from another collection i think it was a japanese collection that we originally we kind of copied and adapted and in their document it's it was stated that um a, a deposit um does not imply transfer of intellectual property to the collection. And I just copied this document and not really thought about it. And, and we actually one, one time had, um, had an issue where there was someone who wanted to use a strain commercially. And it was a strain that had been deposited uh, a long, long time ago. And um, it was not really possible to find the person who had deposited it. But technically speaking, because they had signed this thing, the strain actually didn't belong to us. So technically speaking, we weren't really allowed to make a license on it or anything. So I just, I just um, in our deposit form after that, I just um, uh, deleted the the not, and so it now says uh, deposit does imply transfer of intellectual property to the collection. And I thought that this might, you know, s stop people from, you know, depositing. <coughs> and in fact, no one, I don't think anyone's ever actually noticed. So they're signing a thing where they're, they're basically giving us the property of the, of the strain. And so we can do what, with what, what we want with it afterwards. So I'd just be interested to know what, whether you have anything like that in your deposit. No one. So you don't you don't mention that at all. In fact, um, no. I was I'm looking at it, and uh, it's just the uh, the name of the culture and uh, the deposit of the uh, sequences and uh, isolation um, data uh, collecting data, and then we also have um, a peak. Uh, if they have the peak, uh, uh, or if they don't, why not? And uh, all the uh, documents for ABS, if they have them, and why not? And uh, conditions of use of the material, if they have it, okay. Um, this is the MDA for, from ECHO. And... Uh, so I don't uh, know what... This, is, this is a part where you say that you you deposit this material and it can be um, supplied to the third parties. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily give you the property of the strain. No. So I don't know what happens if you if you have no mention of it. Is, is it implied or... I would suggest probably not. No. <laughs> so, I mean... I, I don't know. Is that? Do you think that would be something worth adding? I said I, I did this because I had I had this one case where it, it ended up when we looked into the details being being complicated, and you know the fact that we didn't actually own the strain and therefore didn't have the right to you know do give a license to it or whatever we had the right to distrib distribute it because that was uh, that was mentioned in the agreement but when it came to licensing or anything technically we didn't have the right to do it um, in our case in Aquai, for example we don't have this MDA we only have 
an information about uh, what kind of strains we accept and uh, if they need to to be okay with the ABS and that kind of stuff, but we don't have an MDA, for example. You do, so they don't sign anything when they deposit? No. <laughs> no I, I, I would think, I mean, I might be wrong, but I would think technically all of those strains that are deposited, you don't own them. Yeah, maybe. And therefore you can't, you can distribute them if that's what's we said. But you, real, but, but you can't do what, you know, particularly if it's commercial, if there's a commercial application. Yeah. So I don't know whether you think that would be something worth adding. I say I was actually really surprised that I thought when we added this that people would you know, like say, oh, no, no. Uh, but in fact, no one has said anything. No, I don't, I don't think they've even noticed. I think I think it's the kind of thing like we all do. You just don't read the, you don't read the thing. You just sign at the bottom. And yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that is a that is a, a very good point. Is that um, is that uh, as far as I know, we just ask the researcher to sign it. And so again, technically, that's legally not not binding. So, should we be asking for a, a legally binding signature on this on the deposit form? I don't think so. Maybe you just yeah, you do that on the internet again, just a case to you agree, you don't read. Yeah, but particularly with this with this question of them of transferring intellectual property, because if it's if the if he's signed it without reading it and said but if that signature is not legal then you know what's in it is, doesn't apply and the university of the person who deposited deposited it could come back and say well you know it's our property and your document isn't legally binding but yeah at one point it's their problem no if they sign it or if they no they agree they don't read like we all do no What? In a bank, right? Because it's mandatory in the case of publish. How do you deal with that? Because it's more than one collection sometimes. It's not your strain. Um, <laughs> if it's been deposited in two collections and they've signed the thing saying they, I don't know, good question. <laughs> I get, How to manage that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe this is just is maybe it's absolutely just not worth it and bothering about this. But I say that I did have this one case where it was it was an issue. So, do you think it would be good for the collections to accept uh, strains um, without um, having the property? Of the string. Well, um, it, it yeah. I mean, the the only it, for for the vast majority of what we do, it, I don't think it's a problem because our role is to distribute the strains. So you know, if we don't technically own them, as long as we have the right to distribute them, that's not a problem. It's only a problem, I think, if there is commercial a commercial. Uh, interest or application yes but uh if you don't have the the property you are maintaining something that you can't use so uh yes but for but for why if you if you can't use you can't uh, distribute so you can't do no but you can anything? i mean technically you could uh you could have a system uh, and that's what we had before is it stated that there wasn't a transfer of property rights but it stated that we had the right to distribute it so you can have the two you can somebody could deposit a thing without transferring the property and give you the right to distribute it to whoever you want so you can use it you can distribute it so uh, yeah i don't know if that's uh, if that's an issue um 
just a just a quick point on the on the um on the uh the the publications um so we actually have a very a very nice system where you can um on the website where you you can use uh something like zotero or one of these um uh, citation manager projects and you can link those directly to your website so in fact we just if we see a publication with a rcc in it you can just in, import it into zotero and then it gets automatically put onto our onto the website so you have to put the tags you put a tag with the with the code of the strain so that it, then it appears on the on the strain page so I can show you that if you're interested. Uh, okay, so what we should do <laughs> with all of this? I don't know. I mean, that's that. That's I don't. I don't have a. I don't have a. Uh, I wonder if you have to ask uh, to the depositor. If uh, if somebody wants to do some uh, commercial, yeah, yeah, I mean, use. technically you would have to. That's why I tried to find the depositor of this strain, mm -hmm. uh, and it was actually even more complicated because the guy at the time worked in Hong Kong, but then afterwards he moved to the United States. So, is it was the strain the property of the Hong Kong University or yeah. his university where he is now? Th that's and another point. Who is the owner? Uh, but yeah, technically, uh, that if you don't uh, stipulate that the property is transferred to you, it's still the property belongs to the person that to the institution of the person who deposited it, and it would be that institution which would have the right to make a license or okay. anything like that. And you don't win any, don't you know, no. don't win anything in the process technically speaking mm -hmm. so that's why i think it's i say i don't have a uh an answer i i personally think that you you should uh put this this clause in i say for the moment no one has ever no one has uh, uh, said that you know this is a problem for them but then Martin's comment is right. If if you put this clause in, and if it's the researcher who signs it, it's the same problem. It's technically uh, maybe it's not legally valid anyway. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I want to know if your term um, condition document have um, expiration data. Because when you have a patent, for example, you have uh, only 20 years for protect the idea. But when uh, uh, somebody uh, put um, a organism in your in your institution, uh, have a expiration data for protect the the term and condition. Uh, no. I don't think so. I never really thought about that, but um, yeah, once it's deposited, once they transfer the property to us, it's terminal. But, you know, it doesn't have a a time limit for that. I don't think. The only one thing we do have, we do. I, d I guess everyone does that as well. We offer the possibility when people deposit to have a uh, an embargo period. Uh, where we don't distribute the strain if they're still if they haven't yet published on on the strain or whatever so we can say uh, we say up to one year so they can deposit and we won't distribute it for up to one year um but uh, no there's no 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 time limit on on that kind of thing uh, and, and why why do you ask the question uh, because your tag uh, before uh, about uh, when when you have an organism and the the person who who give you the organisms don't answer the emails and uh, I think if, if uh, for 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 things which were deposited in the past, you mean? Yes. 
Ah, well, that's, I mean, I don't see there's any way of, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, they, uh, when they were deposited, they signed a document, and uh, at the time, our document said it didn't have a transfer. So if we wanted to change that, we would have to contact the person and get them to sign a new document saying there is a transfer. So otherwise, no, it's, it's you know, they've signed their document, and it's, permanent until, until we do something about it. So. Okay, thank you. So yeah, it's po quite possible that we don't actually own a lot of the strains in our collections. No. Shouldn't we ask a lawyer, as a specialist of the MDA, MTA things, to take uh, a look at it? or uh, We could do. My, my experience of asking lawyers is that things get very complicated <laughs> <laughs> straight away. At least you will have an answer. Yeah, but then they they will they will recommend that we you know we we get them to sign a ten million document signed so by the president of the <laughs> country and. Uh, the the question is then: uh, Are we doing all this? Uh, uh, manager ma management of uh, documents for nothing. I, I mean, MTA, if they are not legal, why are we doing that? Good question. Very good question. That's why I think yeah, you shouldn't bother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's more like in information. Yeah. It's just to, you, to read it. <laughs> Otherwise, you skip it. <laughs> Yeah, so but you can have that with the terms and yeah. conditions, which uh, they, I'm sure most people don't read them, <laughs> but they, they, they sign to say they have. Yeah. So. Anyway, for the deposit of the pat uh, patent deposit is 30 years, as, um, plus five years more if you want to, um, just to extend it. And that's Ad all. Yeah, actually, because I guess uh, patent deposit is a is an interesting one, because what we do as well is we have uh, the possibility for a private deposit, and in that case, we stipulate hmm. that there is no transfer of property. So basically, you know, the question is if if people want to deposit, if they're happy to give you the property, for, uh, it's free. If they're not, they pay for it. Mm. Um, okay, so any other issues on on that kind of thing? So I don't know. Is that something? Is is that uh, something that in the future we should, as a working group, be thinking about, uh, or do you think everyone has their procedures pretty much set? And I think we should try to harmonize all all of these procedures more or less between the collections because for example in my case I never use an MDA maybe I should start to use it and uh, maybe we need to discuss how to to do this with the MDA MTA yeah I say there are there are model documents um, and there's in in the EMBRC um, which document was that in Arno the the model documents for they were in the annexes of one of the MBRC documents. I'm not sure which one. I I don't know what you're talking well, about. You there are many documents. Yeah, yeah, there are many documents. So that you should don't. The model MTA, the model uh, is that, is that model terms and conditions. They were annexes. Yeah, it's an MTA. Um, there are different models in this. <laughs> This document, well, you so presented it yesterday. Yeah, you I said know, they were know, annexes of what? Tell it to me no, which of, of which so. document? So the model MTA, uh, but it's it's not validated. And uh, anyway, we can provide you model documents, and I think probably Miri has them as well. I guess. So there is a, an echo version, which I, I'm fairly sure would be fairly similar. But uh, I say in EMBR free, EMBRC France, we have harmonized uh, quite a lot of stuff that we harmonized the so all of those documents. 
we harmonized the tariffs as well, actually, which was, uh, I don't know if that's a discussion we should be having, but um, the yeah. cost, the cost of the strains. Yeah, because we had you know different the different collections having different prices, and it seemed more make more sense to have everyone with the same price. But I mean, it's not it was not actually an easy thing to do because different people have different costs, obviously. But uh, it seemed to make sense to do that. So I don't know if that's something that we could talk about at some point. But. Um, so yeah, okay. Well, so we'll keep that as a, a potential issue to discuss for future future meetings and stuff like that. And um, and so the last point was uh, to to see talk about uh, quality management systems and see if there is any any kind of action that we could think of to do which would uh, you know harmonize in any way that or is it not worth it or so same question what do you have in terms of quality management systems uh, in Akoi at this moment we are trying to apply for ISO 9001 okay uh, it was difficult <laughs> but uh, we try we will see. Maybe in the end of the year, we can we can say that we have a quality management system uh, based on ISO 9001. And difficult? Why? Oh, because it's very bureaucratic, and we need to have all the procedures very well documented. Oh, it's it's. But, so you haven't actually made the application yet. Yeah. Okay. CIMAR has the ISO 9001, but the collection don't. So the institute does, but the yes, collection, the collection doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. But how does that work? I don't know. But how does the whole institute get a ISO? <clears throat> the institute, the institute has it, but I think it's not applied. Um, in the collection management and uh, but do you have a quality management system even if it's not accredited well it, it depends we check our strains we no, but I don't mean in, in terms of quality of the strains a quality management system is the documentation of no. all of the activities no. and and no Probably the institute has the the ISO, but some for just only for some protocols, not for all the world of the institution. So, yeah, this is uh, the point. You can request, so you can apply for some of the protocols. So you have it. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, you got it, and, and that's it. Yeah, for us, it's just uh, we are uh, accrediting by on the way. Not we haven't got it uh, yet. Um, for selling, distributing, and depositing mm. strains. So maintaining? Oh uh, no, it's just only these three things. But it's imply because mm. otherwise, <laughs> if I if somebody deposits a strain, if I cannot maintain it, so all mm. the protocols associated to these uh, activities, they have been to be uh, in a protocol. The the equipments, the facilities, uh, and the personnel, and everything is write it down. So we now have a company that is uh, helping us to go through the process, and we hope before the end of the year to have a certification. Hope so. And you have somebody dedicated to that? Myself. <laughs> and and I have a, a company here, and this is. Uh, uh, Paula, uh, she has been. Uh, in, uh, I mean, she has been incorporated for help with this uh, procedure. For for tedious procedure. <laughs> for what for what percentage of your time is is not full time doing that? 
the situation is like uh, um, she has to learn first how we work and afterwards she can help us how, uh, in, in the way of uh, writing down. But now she is listing uh, equipments and doing the PNT uh, protocols and uh, the list of uh, consumables and things like that. So she's starting. She arrived uh, to our group uh, one month and a half. Good, good luck. From now. <laughs> the, the, the important thing here is that we are not doing the procedure for the whole lab. It's just for some parts of the collection, just to keep, uh, well, the, the relationships with the client, you know? With the, the, uh, I mean, that's that's one question I have is because uh, we have a, in, in Roscoff, we have a quality management system. So we have everything in place. We have all the documents and the, the structure and everything. But I, for the moment, I'm not convinced that there is an added value to actually get the certification. I'm not convinced, basically, that the, any any of our users would order more, or you know, if we have the ISO certification. So, I, for the moment, when we're, we're not really thinking to do the certification, I think it's it's been very useful to put in place the the system. But uh, for the moment, I'm not really thinking of doing the certification. In, in Marbank, uh, the Institute of Marine Research has this old or overall <laughs> system and the uh, ISO certification. Uh, and um, in, in the beginning, Marbank, we had one person dedicated to prepare all the uh, the SOPs, standard operating procedures, and, and, and so on. But it, it's the same for us. We, we haven't gone the next step to kind of pay the extra money to also kind of certify these uh, these steps so so it's the institution the old, the mother institution is accredited for certain things and certified for certain things and and of course we have a a, a, a digital electronic uh, quality management system with authorizations of personnel and, and 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 so on so so i remember years back we were a bit focused on well the best practices for biobanking has isper got guidelines are they updated what do we think about that because that's the for, for accreditation and of of of, of, um, of analytical uh, measurements and so on you, there's certain steps you have to criteria you have to fulfill so so it, it's so many years ago so i don't know whether isper has kind of update, updated best practices for biobanking and whether we could there is something going on with the human biobanking that is lot of focus on the latest years that that we could learn from or that we could um, well uh, transfer to 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 these uh, environmental biobanks yeah, like as us. far as i know there's there's not been an update i know that there was in there was a french uh norm how do you say norm is that an english word norm um which um which was specifically on uh, biological resource centers. And there was a plan for that to be uh, kind of translated to an ISO. And it was, it was more, you know, it was very pertinent to what we do and it was focused on biological resource centers and best practices and stuff. But as it, uh, I think the plan, you know, it never did get translated to an ISO. So, and I don't think it will be, and I don't think it's been updated. So, yeah, they, they turned uh, the French standard into uh, an international standard. So now there is the ISO for biobanking. Okay, so and, it has been done, and I think it's easy to uh, apply it for uh, other kinds of biobanks, not only for human biobanks. And it's only about uh, risk management or identify where, what is critical in your activities and what you can do to avoid the risk. So it's easy to adapt it to your uh, biobank. So what? So why do you do ISO nine thousand and one then? Because it's easier. Uh, um, yeah, it's easier. And 
but the other one uh, will be more practical. I, I think it's more in a, lang a scientific language uh, to apply uh, to have a quality system because when you are not in, you, know, you do not know quality, um, maybe it's easier to have the right sentence to understand what you need to implement in your in your system. So that's why it's another one. So d does EMBRC have a policy on its 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 uh, member collections biobanks uh, on quality does the mbrc say that we would the encourage to have a quality system as uh, there's nothing that uh, encourage to have a certification uh, i think this is a discussion that will be that are up upcoming um for now, I do not think there is uh, something validated. There's not like a minimum but this is something requirement or anything? No, but this what we should discuss here. And uh, I think EMBRC will encourage to have a creative system, um, or I could say an harmonized creative system, which is a um, minimum standard for collections. And then, then then obviously you you will need to adapt this to your own activities. So w would there be any interest? Because I think uh, I mean most people do have some kind of system. Maybe you don't, but uh, I mean for, f first of all, for anyone who doesn't, I think there would uh, there would s certainly be a possibility to kind of provide a template based on our systems, which would save you a lot of work for, for doing that. Would there be any interest in actually comparing and trying to harmonize the actual structure of the quality systems and the structure and even content? Obviously, some of the content would be specific to each person, but um, because, f for example, um, in our one, uh, it's not uh, selling, distributing, and what was the other thing you had? Uh, uh, depositing. Depositing. I think we have collecting, maintaining, and distributing. Um, but I mean, is there any interest? Is it w would it be useful or completely not to to try to uh, try to harmonize in some way the structure? And I say that because we kind of tried to or started to do that in EMBRC France, so with with Daniels and Villefranche. And it was actually really quite complicated <laughs> to, to harmonize, but... Um. And in my experience, um, it was uh, had been a, a very good exercise to put everything in place. So we can still, like, having um, lists uh, of uh, tasks to follow and do it always the same. And uh, also to write down properly and to revise the uh, methodology or the protocols that we have, and to uh, share, uh, check how all the collections does it uh, or do it, or um, and to improve your own um, procedures and so on. So for me, it has been a very nice exercise, uh, very useful. And also, I have to say that, uh, for example, Miri recommends, highly recommends to have uh, this kind of standards, at least the ISO 1, uh, ISO to, to 90. Be, to be accredited, uh, to, to have be, the certification. To be an MBRC, because otherwise you, you are a collection. If you have a, an, a standard, you, ha you become an MBRC. And then also they recommend uh, to have the biobanking uh, standard but, but because but I, I don't think <laughs> I will uh, apply for that because it's quite complicated. I also have to say that uh, I said that I'm the coordinator but we have uh, all the technicians working on, on that of course otherwise it's impossible to accomplish. So this is a nice uh, work to do together and uh, uh, at least to go ahead and improve. So I think I have seen it as a very nice exercise. But, uh, that, you mean putting? But it have, you have to pay and you have to maintain it. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah. No, but so the question is: in this working group, is there any interest or utility in us comparing the systems we have and 
potentially potentially yes. harmonizing some aspects of it. Or? Yeah, this is an interesting question. Uh, yeah, I think we we are living nowadays in in many many fields on the quality system. I mean, here in our faculty, we have the accreditation of the quality, and it seems that you have this certification, and it seems that in the future. I don't know when, but uh, in, in the future, uh, we are going to compete some way uh, and the best ones will be the, the ones that they have this kind of certification of quality. And, and it is supposed as, as uh, we as uh, MBRC and we are doing work mm, together and trying to improve uh, the work we do in our collections. Uh, it is supposed if, if we all have uh, work on the on the certification on the on the quality certification at least we are doing work with quality and this uh, the 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 you know the people outside from MPRC they, they are going they are going to see that we are going uh, working with this mentality you know the the quality so so you think there would be a, an interest to 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 i mean what we could do as well, because, for example, in Roscoff, I'm not in charge of the quality system. It's Priscilla. So we could put all of the people who are in, involved in the systems together and then see if they want to do some kind of meeting or something where everyone presents what they do and see if there's... Say, uh, uh, for me, there's no... Yeah, I'm asking this question because we don't want to ju just do this, just to have a meeting, and you know it has to be useful if we want to do it. So, so you think there would be some interest to do that? That's maybe something we could do within this working group: is set up a kind of a sub working group on quality or something. And yes, uh, from our point of view, yes, of course, it's always good to chair and uh, and. Uh, I think that was the idea also behind establishing this project to kind of professionalize ourselves together. <laughs> so, so in in in, in that in having that, that as a as a, as a backbone, if you're moving into this working group in the EMBRC. So, I, I, I for EMBRC, I'm I'm not that familiar with it because it's for our institution, it's it's uh, it's a marine biological resource station in in the western part of southern part of, of, of Norway. So are there others? Are there uh, Italian collections? Are there other collections that us here in the room that will be part of that working group? Yes, and yes. That will add competence here? Yeah. Yes, I mean, there will be quite a few others. I mean, there's a collection in Norway, for example, Benta. There's yeah. There is a collection in uh, Belgium, a diatom collection. They're, they are they are thinking of initiating a collection in Crete. Uh, there's collections in Bagnols and Villefranche. Um, where else? Uh, there, were, there obviously were collections or are collections in the UK, but they're no longer uh, involved. And this working group is is um, supposed to be biological resource center which includes collections but also includes and we don't really have any representatives here but the aquarium side of things and there are many many institutes who which have a kind of research aquarium with uh, with staff and stuff so you know that i think there would you know this working group could potentially be quite big the difficulty is trying to get everyone together at the same time, um, but we'll talk about that later on. So, um, yeah, so quality, I mean, that we, we can highlight that as a potential issue to go forward. For me, uh, the idea of spending a two-day meeting talking only about quality is not... not <laughs> I might give that one a miss, but uh, but I think it is imp it is important. So, and if, if it could have a... U a utility that's something we could flag and maybe try and organize so. thank you uh, it's important for people that do not know quality because I, I see that all of you are all already working on a quality system so you know the value of, of a quality system but there are also collections or archaeology services that 
do not know uh, what this is and uh, they think that quality is um, obligations and to work um, I don't know with a specific way so this kind of meeting could help to explain what is quality and wh why it is important and um, I think that people that are, are not in this room um, should understand why it is important so yeah okay um okay well i think maybe it's something like one o'clock so we'll stop there and then this afternoon carry on with some don't quite know what's going to happen but we'll see